Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing awesome today. Sorry for the late upload for those who are gonna be watching this daily. Uh, had a little bit of a family emergency, but everybody's okay. But it kind of reshifted all the gears for today. All right, so welcome to Learn to Write Sci-Fi, right? Here we are in this series. It's a 30-day challenge series. My goal is to help you become a published author of your very first short story if you've never been a published author before. So what we're doing in this series, we're going over all different types of uh, writing tips here in the beginning of the series. And towards the end, we're going to start getting into um, <clears throat> self-publishing, you know, how to get a cover, uh, how to get initial reviews, how to get, you know, readers ahead of time or really after you've written the story, and a bunch of other things. But right now, today, we are going to be focusing on your plot outline. So yesterday, we talked about the protagonist and the antagonist of your short story. Now remember, just as like a little review refresher, the protagonist is your main character, does not have to be a good guy or a bad guy, just the main character of your short story. The antagonist also does not have to be a character. It could be an element, it could be an opposing army, it could be nature, it could be just space, it could be time, it can be anything that the you know the main character is, uh, well it's really, it's against the main character, that's the easier way to say it. All right, so today we are gonna start working on your actual plot. Now, heads up, disclaimer, um, <clears throat> There will be other authors who will have different ways of doing outlines. I'm gonna share with you um, kind of how I did one of my short stories. And it's just my version of doing outlines. You come up with the best system that you can for yourself. I just wanna share with you my way, my methodology of thinking and my creative um, process. And someone out there will have different ways. Some people will critique it and say, well, that's not very good. It's completely up to you. You're gonna be the author, right? Okay, so I'm gonna share with you one of the stories. It's uh, from the universe that I'm creating. It's called Revelations. Um, we, one of the short stories is called, <laughs> fly, uh, Vision from the Stars, all right? So in this story, I'm gonna give you a spoiler in case you never read it. Um, in this story, the main character is a commander in an army for one of the nations in the Revelations universe. His mission in the story, because remember, like I said yesterday, whatever you want your plot to be, or really whatever the main goal of the protagonist is in your short story does not have to be their long-term main goal, but it has to be a main goal for the short story. You have to know what outcome are they after in this. I mean, it could be survival. It could be, uh, you know, promotion. It could be whatever your story is about, whatever their main goal is in that story. So in this story, Envision from the Stars, my main character for the story, his name is Joa Tayonek. All right, he's a commander for one of the armies in the Revelations universe. His goal in the short story was defending his planet um, from an invading army. So in this story, you had the element of, uh, like as far as my creative processes, this all came together. You had the invading army. You had Joa Tyanek trying to stay alive and trying to keep his people alive. And then there was another element where a character was introduced about midway in the story. And her purpose was to share a vision that she had, a spiritual vision that she had, uh, kind of foretelling what Tyanek's destiny was going to be in the next battle. And it was a very big, deciding battle. It was basically basically gonna kinda decide the outcome for the world, if it was gonna be lost to the invading army or if the defenders were gonna be able to, to successfully repel the invaders. And so Tyonek, you know, received the vision from the person, he was told what was gonna happen to him and that he was supposed to die. And so that's all on his mind. For the next couple of pages, he's just thinking about, oh man, you know, is this how destiny's really gonna be? Do I really believe this? You finally get into the final fight, you know, and he decides, you know what? No, I'm going to fight. I want to live. And so he pushes through the situation and leads his people to victory. So in that instance, when I sat down to write this story, one, I knew the character that I wanted to highlight. 
I wanted to talk about Joa Tyanek um, because down the road, outside of this, well, in the future of this short story, he is going to become a meaningful character for this nation. So I wanted to kind of highlight him. And I figured a oh, short story is a really cool way to be able to add a little bit of fluff to this character without, you know, writing a 300 page book. So when I sat down to write this, I knew I wanted to write this about this particular character. I knew roughly that I wanted to show it in a combat situation. So I already knew that the, the antagonist in that situation was the repelling army or was, I'm sorry, was the invading army. But then I also added in the plot twist of having, um, kind of fate be an additional uh, element that he needed to overcome. So depending on your point of view, you could say, okay, well, fate was the ultimate thing that he was up against because it, it was the invading army was the vehicle that fate was using in order to get him to be, you know, killed. But, you know, so then in the end, he was like, no, I'm not going to not dying like this. So he was fighting against destiny. So in that story, let me see, I'm trying to remember. I developed Tyonex, uh character, which is like what we discussed yesterday. Um, I then just do like a rough outline of the plot. I'll sit down and I'll be like, okay, so what are kind of the major scenes that are gonna happen through this story? It's like, you know, you introduce the character, um, you know, then they, just go through whatever different types of things that you want to happen in the outline, and then you get to the end. Um, I know that sounds kind of vague, so I'm trying to think how the, the best way to explain this to make sense, because in, I've found that when I'm writing, and it sucks as far as like teaching people, is that when I'm writing, I'm kind of, the outlines are kind of loose. So I'll go through and I'll write down all the major things that are gonna happen. Then I will, uh, take that very rough outline and then I'll do like a more in-depth outline that'll be like okay in this scene this will happen and then in this scene this will happen and then the major thing that's going to happen here is that the main character is going to you know experience this or in this instance you know the the other character is going to be introduced it's going to tell him about his destiny and then it's going to then you know then after he's going to start dealing with it mentally trying to you know overthink it and overanalyze it and like is it true is it not true battling that on the inside of him, and then you get to the final battle and that breaks down from there. So for myself, I found that the outline, first off, is very important. I am not one of those authors who thinks that, you know, I'm just gonna write, and then however it ends, it ends. I don't think that that's a smart way to do things. The reason being is that if you are trying to create something more than one single short story, you need to know where you're going with it. The ending needs to be structured. So if you're going to build on this, so say you're gonna write a short story series, say like a seven part or a 10 part or even three part short story series, you need the short stories to hit certain points to be able to get to the ultimate end that you want. So if you're trying to build something you need to know what the ending is going to be. You can't just do it creatively. You can't just do it to, you know, when you get to it. You need to outline. And I know that some people are gonna really hate this pro part of the process because it's very, it's creative, but it's also logical. Like you have to really think it through. You can't just, just be artsy and just be creative and just do it. You can, but it won't really end, unless you're really skilled as an author, I can't see it just ending where you want it to. Um, some people, what I think is good is you think of what do I want the ending to be and then kind of what events have to happen in order to get my character to that end. Because if I already know the end and I like the end, I don't have to write it, but I like the end. It, it's, you know, the main character, you know, they die, they succeed, they escape, whatever the outcome is for my story, I wanna make sure that they get to where I want to take them at the end. And it's, it's difficult in a way because everybody's gonna have their own method for, for doing this, but I, I really think you write the end and then figure out, okay, what do I have to do to get them to that part? So 
this part of the process, this part here will probably be one of the longer things that you have to work on. Well, no, I would say the universe rules are definitely very difficult to get out of the way. But if you're going to just kind of just try to jump into the short story itself and kind of just flesh things out from there, I think this will be one of the more difficult things because you can pretty easily put together a, a character profile like we talked about in the last video. And this one will take a little bit more thinking because you got to really think, okay, what, how do I want the story to be? Now remember, when you are starting to create the plot, you are not developing jack squat or very minimal of the antagonist or of any other sub characters. You want to spend most of your time profiling the main character. Everybody else is just there to be part of the story. Nobody else is there to share the limelight. No one else is there to interfere. I mean, there's going to be plot twists. There's going to be some other things. But if you spend too much time developing other characters, your short story will end up being 60, 80, 100, 150 pages. And then at that point, you're approaching, you're a, you're a novella instead of a short story. And if you go too much further, then you're a novel. So our goal is to write a short story. So this, this part is a little bit more difficult for those who are like myself that are very creative and just like, oh man, there's so many ideas I could just run with. You got to slow it down. You got to take it. I would say... Make the outline shorter than you think you'll need and you'll be surprised that the story itself will probably end up being around 40 to 50 pages. That's what I would say. And if worst case scenario, worst case scenario, if you write and the story comes out to be 20 pages, well, you could decide at that point to add to the plot or you could say, look, I wrote a 20 page short story. I can still publish this. I can still use this as a marketing tool or as a free giveaway for helping me to build a brand for the rest of the short stories or a bunch of other things that we're going to discuss later. But I mean, don't think, oh man, I'm going to end up writing this. This thing's only going to be 20, 25 pages. It's crap. I should just throw it away. No, don't, don't, don't do that. Make it, write it. If you got the idea, uh, write it. Because what I think will happen is that you'll start writing and you'll find that it takes longer to get where you think it will and it'll end up being the proper length. Because I mean, if you think about it, you know, the first page easily is just thrown away, not in a bad way, but is thrown away because you're trying to develop the hook. And we'll get into that in another video, but you know, you got like the hook that really gets the reader in. You have to develop the main character in the next couple of pages. You have to develop some sense of backstory on the character probably in the next couple of pages. You don't have to, but if you wanted to. I mean, at that point, you're already probably up to, and you have to introduce whoever the, the bad characters are going to be, or the antagonists, if there are going to be any. Um, so, I mean, you're already like around page 8 to 10, and all you're doing is setup. You haven't even really gotten into the story yet. You spend another 10 pages getting into the story, now you're already at 20. I mean, it won't take long before you're just going through the basic, you know, the, the beginning, middle, and end, and you're already at like 40 pages. So... When you're outlining, don't don't think it needs to be really long. I'd say keep it shorter, and it'll probably uh, be in short story length anyway. So, all right. So to wrap that up, make the outline fairly short. You want to figure out what your end is going to be somewhere around the beginning of the process, so you know how to take or what in your mind the stages will start falling into place to get your main character to that end. Um, you can end on a cliffhanger, you can end mysteriously, you can end with clear conclusion. For myself, I like in the short story for myself to end very clear. Um, some, I've read, you know, short stories where you're not really sure what happened to the character and then it, you leave it up to the the reader's interpretation i hate those i really really do uh, i hate anything where the author or the director or the writer thought you know yeah we're gonna let the the reader or the viewer decide what happened to those characters i can't stand that and the reason being is that i want to know what did the writer think should happen even if i don't like the end if they just like cut it out and just say, oh, we're done, it'd be like, well, well, what happened? I have no conclusion as a reader or as a viewer to be able to say, okay, I liked it or I didn't like it because it just was over. So for myself, I, I say all the, the, the stories need to end with a clear conclusion 
And it doesn't mean that there's not room for more stories later. It just means that in that moment, it was resolved. Whatever the issue was, it was done. And that to me helps me feel like, okay, um, at least that story is, is finished. All right, so if you guys have any comments or questions, please leave those down below. We are on day seven of this 30-day challenge, which is amazing. We've done a week straight of these videos, and I've started to notice there's a couple of people that are, are uh, commenting regularly here on Facebook and also if you're watching on YouTube as well. So if you'd like to follow us on Facebook, our page is Learn to Write Sci-Fi, and if you'd like to follow us on YouTube, it is White Light Media. I'm having a lot of fun making these. It's kind of stretching me a bit because I'm trying to think of, okay, how would I teach you guys to write? So it, it's helping. So I know that some of these videos are stronger than others, but that's okay because then what this will do is it'll teach me, you know, and I can ask you guys later, which is what I'm looking to do after we get to the 30 day challenge done is ask you guys, all right, what do you guys feel that you need help? And, and then I can start really um, focusing the videos down to what you guys need because right now just trying to build an audience of viewers it, it just takes a little bit of time to build an audience together to then say okay what do you guys need help with what do you guys need um, comments on or videos on and then I can start going from there all right anyway thank you guys again for watching a lot of fun I'm looking forward to everything else if you guys have any other questions please leave those down below and I will see you guys again tomorrow